Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Had a fun uh, little crazy video this morning. That one's doing really good. So this one just popped up. I was gonna do the uh, Chip Zdarsky, uh, what is it? Daredevil and the Spider-Man, a life, a day in the life, whatever it is, something life. Probably do that uh, later tonight. But uh, this one, uh, first of all, just giving you an update on the Jawbreakers Lost Souls Remastered. Uh, wow, we're hitting about 25,634 backers, so that's great. Link will be in the description. This is why I'm kind of a little tense. So, you know, you're, you're prepping for a video, so you... Oh, okay, let's get some examples of the artwork. And, God, the first... I, I do not, not know why Larry Stroman is so poorly served by Google. Because... The first picture is not Larry Stroman. This one right here. This is Tom Rainey. I didn't even need to read it at the bottom. I could tell from, you know, even from a small version of it. And then, like, you do X Factor and, like, none of these are big. Oh, that's pretty nice. Oh, that's the original art. But it's just, like, these portfolio pieces. I was trying to get some good color, you know, interior pages, and there just aren't a lot of them. That's... Okay, so it's the classic cover. That, no, that, I think that's, no, I, I don't think that's Larry Stroman either. This is like a real, and look at this, they're all like these like low resolution from like 20 years ago. It's breaking my heart. So anyway, Larry Stroman is, uh, been in the industry since the 80s. Uh, probably the thing he's known the best for is X Factor. Oh, here's his career. He started on an American flag. Yeah, Alien Legion was like the first time he, it was like uh, him and Chuck Dixon on that. There, that was for the epic line at um, Marvel. And he was on that for, that's the, the real first thing I remember him on. He was on that for a while. Um, and then he came off of that to uh, do, he started doing some fill-ins. And then the big, big deal was when he got on X Factor. Where is X Factor? What? X Factor didn't start until 19, or his run on it didn't start till October 1991. Wow, I remember, because I was out of high school then, so I remember him being on it in high school. So I'm probably misremembering it with the, uh, he did a fill-in on um, Wolverine. I think that might be what I was thinking of, trying to find that one. Maybe that's later too, am I just a crazy person? Ah, the full the fill in for Wolverine was 1992. Uh, memory almost full. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, I had a different uh, video plans, but it was just kind of like Twitter nonsense, and I was like, eh, whatever, people acting stupid. Um, but uh, this one kind of broke my heart because I love Larry Stroman's work, and you just see little teeny tiny God is so annoying over in this corner. I, I had to put on the uh, the U-Block Origin and the Ghostery just to... Bleeding Cool will shut your computer down. Um, but, uh, so, you know, I love his stuff, but he doesn't get a lot of work. And then when I see this and it says Larry Stroman on turning down work, it just broke my heart. Um, so again, let's look at his you know career. Started in 1985, uh, 33 years ago. You know, good run. He he went to Image. He did his book Tribe over at uh, Image, and then after that, it just kind of peters out. It's like it's mainly reprints and covers, and then even just like if you look at the screen right here, that right there is. 2017, all of 2017 to right now. And I can tell you just looking at it, starting at the top, scroll in, we're talking reprint, reprint, uh, variant cover, variant cover, reprint. Uh, I believe this is a, a pinup. Uh, the last actual, like, real steady work he got was in 2017 and it was for this mini series that do you remember this catalyst prime incidentals no no impact no idea 
Uh, oh, Snakebite Cortez. Colors, interesting. Um, so this is a good, actually, team. Joe Casey, Larry Stroman, uh, Snakebite Cortez. But uh, just absolutely had no real impact on anything. So you see the rest of his work is just a bunch of... Uh, did he actually do Ninja... I got to find this one. Ninja K number 10? That looks like... So it looks to me like five issues in the last two and a half years. I'm going to see if this one was actual interiors because if it is, I'll probably look for it. Oh, nice. And again, one of the things I've talked about in, in videos right now is that um, there's no careers anymore. Like if you're in good with everyone and you have a good rep, you will get one to three issues a year, a couple of variants, covers and that's it like you might make 15,000 off of your comics work you know your new comics work um so anyway this uh, article came out and like my heart is already breaking because i know what it's going to be it's going to be the sjw trump derangement in melt brain insanity of uh oh so i'll talk about the the, the video i didn't do tony isabella who created black lightning I think that's his middle name. <laughs> that's his legal middle name. Tony created Black Lightning Isabella. He, uh, some psychopaths, um, although maybe not. I was talking to a friend and I go, you know, some of these people really freak me out. They seem extremely mentally ill and deranged. And my friend said, no, they're just saying this for clicks. They don't believe any of this type of stuff. But they're repeating it hundreds and hundreds of times, and they're trying to have real life consequences. Uh, and they're trying, so so they're saying that uh, Ethan Van Skyver gave out a, Tony Isabella was talking about Cyberfrog was gonna be 88 pages, and 88 is a, 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 a Nazi code. And, but then he's like, but I gotta admit that 88 is also a standard, you know, length of a, you know, graphic novel. Back in the day when I was collecting comics, 22 pages was like the average for story pages in a comic. I think that continued until well into the 90s. Um, and I think that went away during the Quesada era. Correct me if I'm wrong, all y'all old heads. Let me, but I remember 22 pages being the standard length uh, of a story for most of the time I was really, really into comics when I was younger. So um, yeah, so the thing is, they, they're doing this cutesy pie game of I'm going to defame you and I'm going to destroy you. And if I ever get called on it, I'm just going to say, oh, I was, you know, it's just Twitter talk. But you're trying to have real world consequences. And we're going to see that this Twitter culture war, it's it's like I said, and when I've talked about the videos of Mark Wade and his tortious interference, by the way, I got corrected. Um, tortious interference is not interference with the tort. <laughs> it's an interference with the contract. The, the tortious. The tortious is, you know, re refers to it being civil law, not criminal law. Um, so it's uh, tortious interference with the contract. You're interfering with the contract, not tortiousness. Um, so, and I'm, I, I'm positive my uh, lawyers have, ex have explained this to me many, many times, and I just, I'm a dummy and I forget things. Um, but they have real world consequences that are bad for everyone, including them. Federal lawsuit is not cheap, um, and but they're trying to destroy people, but then that becomes actionable. And then there are people that I consider to be caught in the crossfire. So Larry Stroman's going to make a decision, I believe based on fake news, rumors. One of the biggest things they count on, these mentally ill or just sane but extremely malicious people, is they count on a couple things. Number one, they count on social pressure. That artist you like, that writer you like, that person you want to work for, that person you want to be hired by. They said this, so it behooves you to also say the same thing. The other thing is the negative social pressure. You've seen people be destroyed for absolutely nothing. So there's fear. Like I said, SJWs have two things to offer you, fear and poverty. Now, I don't think Larry Stroman is fearful. I mean... Pretty formidable guy. I've seen him at conventions before. But I do think he's wrong. And I think he's being misled by malicious people. And he's paying the price for their lies. SJWs will lie to your face. They will lie on Twitter. They will lie on Facebook. They will lie in a sworn statement. 
and then claim that they had a, a magical whoopsie daisy of a memory, they will lie under oath. They will lie and lie and lie because SJWs are the bad guys. They're the villains. And they hurt regular people, talented people. Again, I'm going to go back to this. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, I was, I felt like tightness around my heart. It was bothering me so bad. Larry Stroman is one of the greats. I reviewed uh, one of his books for Marvel before SJW, I believe, last year. I really need to get a lot more of them. They're just fan freaking tastic but you can't tell that according to uh, Google, which will show Joe Casada, uh, um, uh, Tom Rady, and what is it? Terry Shoemaker art and say it's Larry uh, Stroman. He is very, very poorly served by uh, Google. Oh, this is a cool one. I love this old cover. Come on. How awesome is that? And now, Mr. Sinister and the Nasty Boys. Uh, se uh, 75th uh, issue, $1.75. Came out in 1991. Love it. Love this stuff. Oh, oh, here's some of his work from that Ninja H. I, I would not say it's his... Uh, I'm not loving it like I love the X-Factor stuff, but it's still quite good. So, um... Larry, uh, Rich Johnston, so you know it's going to be filled with a lies, uh, half-truths, a dissembling, um, and a, a mix of those three. So uh, he says, uh, Larry Stroman has a strong superhero comic book history, drawing X-Factor in the Peter David era. Um, uh, and then that was followed by Joe Quesada and J Jay Lee. Uh, then he did The Million Selling Tribe uh, from Image Comics. Um, then he... I guess he's been doing his own publisher called Axis. I don't know a lot about this. Um, so they, I saw this Facebook post. I don't know if he went private or, again, don't contact these people. Respect my elders. He's not that much older than me. He's like uh, 10, 12 older, years older than me. But uh, I really respect him as an artist. And I think he's been leading down, the, being led down the garden path. The thing is, like I said, don't let people take food off your table if they didn't put it on it. In the last... Now, where is it? He's gotten three cover gigs, one for an image book. It's, it's not a lot of work. He had uh, in May and all of 2018, it looks like he had one. Am I reading this correctly? All of 2018, he had one issue and it looks like about four covers this year. You know, coming up on halfway done, he has three covers. That's it. And when the thing about variant covers is when they start doing variant, those are not good paydays. The, the deal is they'll go do five, eight, ten, but they're pay, paying these people like $300. They're just throwing it out there, whoever takes it. Um, so you're looking at, you know, making $10,000 off of your, your new work for a year. Um, so he, he uh, posts on Facebook. Um, I went and I saw the thread, and but I couldn't get back to it when I went back, so maybe he made it private or something like that. He says, just turned down a project written by one of my used-to-be favorite writers. He's part of that Comicsgate alt-right crapola. I would have made a lot of money. Oh, well. Here's the deal. We all know. You know, he's an older guy. You want to show bravado. He wouldn't say, I don't, I don't think he would be saying this if it didn't bother him. Because he's going to get a very tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of, of uh, yes cleaning from the usual suspects. These people who encouraged him to turn down this book, they're not going to provide him work. Um, so uh, I don't know who he's referring to. I had one suspect. I talked to that person and he said, no, he's not talking about me. Um, uh, which, But I can kind of narrow it down just turned down a project written by one of my used-to-be favorite writers. He's part of that Comicsgate alt-right crapola. Okay, Comicsgate and alt-right are not the same thing. Like I said, I, I can't name anyone, I'm thinking, who is actually Comicsgate. And again, Comicsgate is a real loose definition. It's don't spit in my soup, don't call me a Nazi. That's basically it. Um, uh, who is alt-right. But one of the people who took food off of his off of Larry's table by lying to him by spreading these lies they count they count on people like Larry to be too busy to go down that rabbit hole to see hey uh, somebody said this I, I just saw 
on uh, uh, Mark Wade did that post. I peeked at it. Somebody was saying that a, a guy who is not white is a white supremacist. They will throw any allegation at anyone because it doesn't cost them anything. The, the odds that you're going to get taken to court are incredibly, incredibly low. But then when you do get there, it's incredibly expensive. But most people can do the risk versus reward. I can say this, this day, this day. It, it's kind of very... Ex you need a person to basically admit to every single part of tortious interference to take them to court. And then repeatedly defame you in an easily disprovable way. In multiple venues, in multiple states, in multiple ways over and over again for months. Um, so here's a deal. I do not believe that this favorite writer of his is alt-right. I think he might have worked with or talked to someone who likes the concepts of Comicsgate. But again, that is effectively, waiter, don't spit in my soup and don't call me a Nazi. It's real, real simple stuff. But it's very, very threatening to these ideologues who have taken over and destroyed comics. Three years of almost every single metric going down. Only one metric went up last year and it went up less than the rate of inflation. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm pissed. First of all, I'm pissed at Google for, for dissing Larry Stroman, but I'm really angry at the people who have continually spread these defamatory, stupid, mean girls, rumors. All they have done is hurt people. All they have done is ruin businesses, cost people money, cost people jobs. And when you kowtow to these people, when you make books for them, they do not buy them. How many dozens of times have we seen the SJW focus book get canceled for low sales at issue six, issue nine, issue 11, over and over and over again. So they're gonna put this as, you know, uh, oh, you're on the right side of history, but once you get on the right side of history, they're gonna let you starve. They're gonna feed you lies and propaganda, but not food. They're not gonna give you jobs. They don't care about you. All they need is for you to bolster their self-image, bolster their propaganda, count on you being too busy, being a normal person with a normal life to you know, track down the 50 different threads they do with uh, defamatory f false BS. And Larry Stroman, gets, Larry Stroman gets hurt. Larry Stroman gets to make less money. Uh, so I wanna see these. Uh, So yeah, so again, almost no engagement, three comments, th uh, three, you know, four comments. So this has been up for a couple hours and nobody really cares. Larry Stroman acted on purposefully malicious and bad information. They will never tell you the truth. They will never tell you the full, full truth. They will never give you context. These are evil people. These are villains. These are bad guys and you know they're bad guys because they're always telling you they're the good guys. They're always sanctimonious, smug, tilting their head up when they take their profile. Who tilts their head up when you take a picture? Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. Okay, let's see if the, uh, the Indiegogo went up. I think I'm going to be doing a live stream with Ethan probably eh, maybe tomorrow. Oh, nice. It did go up. So go check this out. It's a fun comic. By the way, oh, of course I would love. Oh, bringing that up. Larry Stroman, I would love to work with him. And I'm sure that atmosphere has been completely poisoned by malicious people who will not support Larry, who will not give him work, who will trick him out of making money with constant lies, and then he'll get three covers this year. Maybe a backup story in one of the War of the Realms garbage, you know, quarter box fillers. It's really, really heartbreaking. So I got to find some Larry Stroman... Uh, uh, I actually think I might have one in the... Uh, I got all these Marvel before SJW books and I keep getting too busy. Um, but I, I got to look into it. Great artist being lied to, having food stolen off his table by malicious, evil, mean girls, rumor spreaders. It's, it's really and truly heartbreaking. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're, you're still uh, sub subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the uh, GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. The link for my current Indiegogo is uh, right there. 
And I'll have, uh, oh, I'm a little behind again. I am. Well, now I have two. Oh. Yeah. I think I'm going to do a double for Chip Zdarsky books tonight, and then I'll do a uh, Marvel Before SJW tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.